Hi everybody. In the past, I have generally held the opinion that if you had to start modifying a piece of equipment before it was through the warranty period, you probably should have made a better choice in what you were buying. Well, for the most part I still believe that. But this particular bike was bought to be the least expensive thing that would do what I wanted it to do. So naturally there are going to be some issues. First thing I need to do is get the front fender straightened out and to find out what's happening with the front brake. So let me get some weight on the back to get the front wheel off the ground. Yes, I know there are jacks that will let me pull it up and get it at a better working height, but really uh, what I've got going here is a couple of rocks and it seems to be okay. Here you see the front brake lever and it seems to have a wildly excessive amount of play and then when it starts to grab as you put on more pressure it'll pretty much bottom out. Now the play is not a problem and I can easily adjust that out. What bothers me is the springy or sponginess that's going on here. Uh, drum brakes will never be as crisp as disc but they shouldn't be that soggy either. What usually causes that is a set of brake shoes that are contacting at one high point and then as additional pressure is applied the internal mechanism is shifting, bending, warping, whatever to bring more brake lining into contact. This is a very bad thing. So I'm going to pop the front wheel off in order to take a look at that. And the front fender as you can see is bent or warped slightly off center and I had attempted to straighten that out a little bit before but it appears that some of the mounting bolt holes are not lining up very well and unless there is some other underlying cause, I believe slotting the holes on a couple of the mounting screws is going to be the best way to deal with that. But I'll really need to take it off completely in order to find out what's going on and make sure I'm not just hiding a problem rather than actually fixing it. So, let me grab a few wrenches and see where I can go with this.
normally when you are dropping the front wheel in order to change a tire, check bearings, whatever. You generally do not have to remove these cables. I'm doing it this time to make it a little easier to remove the fender. around this side. This should probably have been kept on the brake cable. Slot the holes on both tabs. Slot the holes on this tab to straighten it out if that is the actual problem. If the problem is with the fender, I'll modify the fender. If the problem is with the front end geometry, then I have to see what that problem is to it. So. Okay, at this point it is pretty obvious that it's the fender itself that's not lining up properly. The front axle slid out really 
and we are talking just about exactly 31 centimeters to the top edge of the hole. Okay, maybe a millimeter's difference. No, not even that. 31 centimeters on the nose, both of them. Okay, so the axle slid freely. These line up to the same distance here, and the fender has an obvious bend to it. I have a round file and I could slot those holes out a little bit at a time and get her to line up, but that would be a very slow and tedious way of doing it with a lot of trial and fit. So I'm just going to get stupid and get out a drill and see where I go from there. Shortly after I moved here, when I was reasonably certain that the move was going to be permanent, bought a load of tools that replaced the ones that were heavy and generally not worth trying to ship or move. Most of these I have not yet had much chance to try out. When you buy tools here in the Philippines, it's basically a crapshoot. Um, we get a lot of imports, but the quality is just fairly good to non-existent. And the stores have tools that I would swear were rejected by Harbor Freight in the U.S. It's kind of a dumping ground for a hardware that can't be sold anywhere else. At least that's the way it used to be. I'm glad to say that it does seem to be improving. Actually, the whole situation here has moved so far so fast that I find it just completely mind-boggling. Uh, I first came here around 2000, and at that time, I mean, it was for sure. 
third world country. You had some people with money and the vast majority with nothing at all. And a handful, a very tiny handful of middle class. And since then, there has been what I could only describe as a middle class explosion. And Okay, the clearance on this side and this side is not identical, but it is close enough to it. Now, for the brakes. Oh, the shoes appear to be properly on the pins and they seem to be making contact over most of the surface these down got like 20 kilometers on this thing. GN 125. Okay, this is the same brake shoes they use in the 125 model and I believe the same ones they use on the Honda 125. Uh, they are just ultra generic. I mean, they're like three to six dollars a set depending on where you buy them. Now, the grease here is from the speedometer drive gear, and it has its own little tab that has to fit down in one of these notches, and you must be careful when you reassemble things that this tab actually drops into one of those notches or you end up in a situation where the thing bends and the speedometer doesn't work and that's like really highly not good. Use a non-greasy rag a look at the inside of the brake drum. Uh, 
Huh. There we go. The drum itself looks fairly smooth, but there is along one edge on the lip a I don't know what to call it really. Notch, divot, whatever. But it does seem to extend far enough that it was contacting the edge of the brake shoes. I don't know for sure that it was causing a problem, but I do know for sure that it can't be doing anything good. Appears to be all the way on. This spacer is part of a stack. Now, the bolt rests against here, pinches against the backing plate. The inside of the backing plate has a spacer in the center that contacts the inner race of the bearing on this side. There is a spacer in between the two bearings, inner race to inner race, and then there is a spacer on this side which contacts the inner race of this side bearing, the inside of the fork, and then you have the nut that goes all the way on the end. This allows you to tighten up the axle until you have a good solid connection to the lower forks while still pinching only the inner races of the bearings and not putting any stress or strain on things. So, See what we can do. Okay, the front fender still looks a little goofy, but it looks a little less goofy than it did before. Eventually, it will rust out, rot out, and I'll replace it with a new one made out of stainless. 
but for now it's considerably better than it was. starts to drag and maybe a half inch between the grip and the brake lever when she bottoms out. So we'll leave that where it is for now. 